Mongoose offers us developers a very powerful way of validating the data that's coming into our model. So in this lecture, we are going to learn about data validation with Mongoose and we will learn about some of the built-in data validators. So what does a validation actually mean? Well, validation is basically checking if the input values are in the right format for each field in our document schema and also that values have actually been entered for all the required fields. On the other hand, we also have something called a sanitization. Sanitization ensures that the inputted data is basically clean so that no malicious code is being injected into our database or into the application itself. So in that step, we remove unwanted characters or even code from the input data. Keep in mind that the validation and sanitization is very important while doing backend development. The backend application should be developed in such a way that it should never accept the input data coming from the user as it is. We should always validate and sanitize the input data and we will talk about data sanitization later in this course. In this lecture, let's entirely focus on data validation and let's talk about some built-in validators. And we are going to do data validation right on the model itself. And actually, we have already used one of the data validators. This required here, it is a data validator. So we can specify a data validator right here in the schema type options. Also keep in mind that this required here, it is a data validator and we can use this data validator on all data types. It can be used on strings, numbers, booleans, etc. Then we also have this unique, but this unique is not a data validator. It will of course throw an error if we try to duplicate a movie name, but unique is technically not a data validator. Keep that point in mind. So let's talk about some other data validators. For example, on a string type, we can also use data validators like max length and min length. So we use this max length and min length data validators to specify the maximum and minimum length of the string value which we are expecting for that field. For example, here we have this name field. And on that, I'm using this max length data validator. So here I can specify what should be the maximum length of the movie name. Here, I'm going to specify it as 100 characters. And if the user tries to enter a movie name more than 100 characters, then we want to show an error message. We can specify it after the comma here in this array. And here, let's say movie name must not have more than 100 characters. Let's also specify min length data validator to specify the minimum number of characters we are expecting for the movie name. Again, to this, we can assign an array. And inside that array, we can specify the minimum length. For now, I will keep it as four. And then a validation error message. So here, let's say movie name must have at least four characters. Let's save the changes here. And let's test this out. So let's go to Postman. Let's open this create movie API. So here we already have a movie object. What I'll do is I will change its name. So for example, maybe ABC. Okay. Now, if you remember here, we have specified the minimum length for this name field as four. So if I try to insert this movie object in the database, we should get an error. So if I click on the send button, you see movie name must have at least four characters. So we are getting this error message. And I think I need to correct this spelling mistake. Okay, so here we are getting the data validation error message. Now, let's see if we are getting the same validation error message when we try to update a movie object. So let's go to this update movie API and let me go ahead and let me grab an ID. So let's say I want to change the movie name of this movie object with this ID. So currently it is test two. Okay, let me paste the ID here. And let's say I want to change the name of the movie to maybe XYZ. So when I try to update this movie object, in that case also, we are getting this validation error message. Movie name must have at least four characters. Okay. And we are getting this validation error message during update because if I go back to VS Code and if we go to update movie API, so here we have this create movie API, here we have this update movie API. And if you see here, when we are using this find by ID and update, there we are specifying this options object. And there we have set run validators to true. If we set it to false, in that case, this validation error message, it will not happen. And it will go ahead and it will change the name of the movie with this movie ID to this one. 
so in that case we will not get this validation error message let me actually show you that so when i click on the send button you see we have not got any validation error message and the name of the movie has changed to xyz okay and if we turn it on in that case we should not be able to change the movie name okay in the same way if i try to create or update a movie object with movie name greater than 100 characters in that case also we should get a validation error message now here i'm not going to try and specify a movie name with more than 100 characters but we have already tested it with minimum characters so as you can see it is working it will also work for the maximum characters all right and keep in mind that this max length and min length it can only be used on fields of type string we cannot use it on fields of type number or boolean etc now if you want to specify the minimum or maximum value for number field for example here let's say we have this ratings it is of type number and there we want to specify the minimum and maximum value for this ratings so we know that the minimum value for the rating should be one so for that we can use this min we can assign it with the value one or here we can also specify an array like this there we can specify the value one and we can also specify a validation error message here we can say ratings must be one or greater than one okay in the same way we can also specify the maximum value so let's say max this is another validator and here for the ratings the maximum value is going to be 10 and if the user tries a value more than 10 then we can also set a validation error message and we can say ratings must be 10 or less than 10 okay and also keep in mind that we can use this min and max also on date types so this min and max can be used on number types and date types let's go ahead and let's test it out so let's save the changes let's go to postman and there let's try to create a movie object let's call it test movie one okay and let's try to specify ratings maybe zero okay so when i click on this send button here we have this validation error message ratings must be one or above if i specify maybe 11 here and if i try to create this movie object there also we should have this validation error message ratings must be 10 or below okay so these validators this min and max validators are also working as expected but if we specify our ratings which is between 1 and 10 in that case this movie object should be created so for example if i say ratings is 5.2 and if i make this post request this movie object should be created in that case as you can see finally we also have another validator called enum so if i scroll down somewhere we have this genre fields okay now here what i want is i want to specify a set of genres from where a user can choose for that we can use a validator called enum okay and to this we can assign an array and inside that array we can specify the values which is acceptable for genre type and in order to save some time i have already created that array so i'll copy it from here and i'll paste it here okay so a user can choose a genre only from these values if you try to use any other value in that case we should get an error now how can we specify the error message so here we cannot go ahead and add a comma and then specify the error message in that case whatever value we specify here that will be considered as a new genre right so instead of doing it like this what we need to do is here to this enum we need to assign an object in this object we are going to have a value field to this we will assign this array and then we are also going to have a message field okay and to this message field we can assign the error message let's simply say this genre does not exist okay let's save the changes and here if you notice we have these nine genres so if we try to use any other genre apart from these nine values we should get an error okay so let's try it out let's go to postman let's try to create a new movie object let's call it test movie 2 okay and in there let's specify the genre as maybe 
I'll simply use one value here and I'll say, let's simply say test. Okay, let's try it out. So when I click on the send button, here we have this validation error message. This genre does not exist. So this enum validator, it is also working as expected. But I'm not going to use this validator on the genre type. I just wanted to show you that we also have this enum validator, which can be used something like this. I'll simply comment it. I will keep it for your reference. So these are some of the built-in validators which we can use on our model. Let me show you in Mongoose documentation where you can find more about these validators. So here in the Mongoose documentation, you can go to this validation. And if I scroll down, we should have something called as built-in validators. And here you can see all the built-in validators. So as you can see on the number, we have this min and max validators. On the string, we have enum. And keep in mind that this enum can only be used on the string type. Okay. We cannot use it on number type or any other type. It can only be used on strings type. Then we also have this match, min length and max length, which we also talked about. Okay. And we have already talked about this required validator earlier. So you can go through this documentation if you want to learn more about built-in validators and how they work. In the next lecture, we are going to talk about how to create custom validators. Okay, so here you can see how you can create a custom error message. Then I already mentioned that unique is not a validator. Then in the next lecture, we are going to talk about this custom validators. So there we will see how we can create our own custom validators. All right, so this is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.